So first, let's look at the spatial lag model. And we start, and, and as I mentioned this morning, if you want the um, gory details of the derivation, I refer you to the chapter six of the spatial econometrics text. Uh, it has an appendix as well that shows, illustrates the different matrix partial derivatives that you have to use to get this stuff to work. But I will skip most of that. Here, I'll just give you a sense of what's going on. Um, it's very important to realize that we're in a different world from the standard likelihood estimation. The standard assumption is independence or uncorrelatedness, which allows you to build the likelihood observation by observation. Once you have spatial correlation, that is no longer the case. You cannot build the likelihood observation by observation, but you have to build it for the joint distribution of the data. So unlike the standard regression context, or even the heteroscedastic context, where you build up the log likelihood by saying, what is the distribution of y at i? You cannot start with that in the spatial context. So instead, what you have to do is kind of a, a mind game where you start by specifying the joint density for the unobservable error term. And you have that because you have assumed a multivariate normal distribution for this error term. And then what you need to do, of course, that's not operational. You cannot estimate anything that's based on unobservable. So you have to switch from the distribution of the unobservable error term to the distribution of the observable dependent variable y. Because in the model, y is rho wy plus x beta plus epsilon. Epsilon, the error term, is the only random part it gives its randomness to the dependent variable y. So what we're really interested in is what is the likelihood, the joint probability for these dependent variables y, because those we can observe, and so those we can use in an estimation process. The error terms we can't. So what this requires is to first, if you will, spell out the joint distribution for the error terms, and do the, uh, then do a transformation of random variables. This is a classic type of exercise you get in probability theory. You know, given that random variable x has this distribution, what is the distribution of the square root of x? Or what is the distribution of 5x plus 2? And those are the kinds of exercises that you get. Here we are given the distribution the joint distribution for the error vector, what is the joint distribution of the y vector, which is a function of the error vector? Which function? Well, the regression function. So that is what we're working with. So the point of departure, as I mentioned, is this uh, multivariate normal distribution for the errors and the functional relationship that ties the errors to the observable dependent variable. And that functional relationship is simply a flipping around the regression specification and just specifying the error term as some part in the filtered, spatially filtered y, which is the random part, and then the x beta x for practical purposes. We take it to be non-stochastic. You don't have to, um, it's just, makes all the proofs more complicated, and we won't get into that today. So for practical purposes, the only randomness in this thing comes from the error term, and it gets translated into randomness of the y. How does that translation work? How do we get a proper distribution for the y? Well, one thing that makes our life easy is that we assume normality, and it is a linear transformation. So linear transformation of a normal random variable is, again, a normal random variable. So that's easy. What we need to watch out for is to make sure that the new distribution is properly scaled so that it remains roughly put, you know, I mean, there's a whole formal thing behind this, but the way I'd like to summarize it, we have to make sure that this is a proper probability. So we don't get any negatives. We don't get any 
values over 1, and we make sure that it integrates to 1 over the range of, of the support of the, of the parameter value. So that's really our problem. So when we look at this linear relationship, we need to get the likelihood for the transformed variable, the y being a transformation of the error term. And to do that, we need a concept that um, in standard textbooks is never mentioned, but it's crucial in the spatial case, is the concept of the Jacobian of the transformation. And the Jacobian of the transformation is the determinant, technically speaking, of the partial derivative of this function with respect to the variable. Um, so this is something you can think of as a scaling variable. So say we have a distribution for one variable, this other variable is a function of this. And so it changes the scale. And therefore we need to rescale everything to make sure that it still adds up properly to sum or integrate to 1 as the overall probability and to remain between 0 and 1. This is a standard um, concept in probability theory. If this is new to me, to you, <laughs> you'll have to take my word for it uh, and <laughs> just read up on it. But this is very crucial. The reason why uh, <coughs> you might not be aware of it is that in the standard, in the standard classical regression, it's the same problem, in fact. You start with the distribution for the error term, and then you move from that to the distribution of the observed dependent variable, but the Jacobian is 1. So you never have to worry about it. It basically never gets mentioned. And so in the spatial case, because this is a joint distribution and it pulls everything together through this matrix, we don't get rid of the Jacobian. In time series, the Jacobian is also there, but it reduces to a scalar. So again, it's not really a problem. Uh, this is also a scalar, by the way. You know, the determinant of a matrix is a single number, is a scalar, that literally scales this probability function, this likelihood, up and down. So this would not be a problem if this were a constant scalar, but it's not. The parameter rho is part of the scale. So if we're if this was a constant, you know, we're maximizing a likelihood. Whether we maximize the likelihood or the likelihood times five, it's going to be the same maximum. If we multiply it by a scalar, by a constant, it doesn't change. So in that case, we wouldn't have to worry about it. But in our case, we do have to worry about it because this scaling factor will change as our parameter rho changes. And that is the major complicating factor in maximum likelihood estimation of spatial models. This determinant does not go away. So this is a complicating factor both you know, conceptually or methodologically, but also numerically, computationally. Because at all times, you have to worry about how do I get a determinant of a matrix of the dimensions of the size of the data set. So this is an n by n matrix. You know, if we go to the uh, re remote sensing pixel example, 50, 50 million pixels, this is a 50 million by 50 million matrix. Okay, forget about it. You can't do this. So this is something to keep in mind as we proceed. So then we have all the pieces in place. We have assumed a distribution a multivariate normal for the error term. We have processed the transformation from the one random variable, the error term, which is unobservable, to the random variable that is observable, the dependent variable y. So now we can write out our likelihood function. And the likelihood function is simply the joint probability with the 